So I'm Robert Hussart. Um, I'm a conductor, musician. Um, I work uh, in all kinds of fields, um, but mostly in an opera house in the Royal Danish Theatre, and where I conduct uh, all kinds of repertoire. Schnee seems to be partly a piece about the nature of music itself. Where does sound come from? How could it be organized? What could it mean? And what does it tell us about the things around us, about time, about the universe, about atomic structures or, or, or quantum theory or anything like this? It, it's a piece that's uh, structurally on the theoretical side, highly complicated, um, exceptionally built, I mean, uh, in the most extraordinary detail, um, and with a, with a, with a mathematical um, imagination that reminds me of Bach as much as it does of Nancaro, or um, perhaps you could also say Ligeti is in there, um, or Messia is another person who um, came to mind. Schnee is, um, among other things, from my point of view, a meditation on the nature of things, and um, a meditation perhaps more specifically on the nature of snow, or schnee. Um, it, Hans was quite specific that the piece could never be called snow, or indeed snee. Um, it's schnee, and in fact there's even the, the, the sound of the word is played in the piece sometimes, so you hear this sh you know, and there are, there are throughout the score um, little fragments of text, um, like Es ist Schnee or the Es ist Winternacht in German, um, to give a, a sense of phrasing as though there are little songs happening, tiny little songs, three or four note songs happening in, inside this world. But um, yes, one, one can Im immediately imagine the, the silence in nature when snow has fallen. It's like a mute has landed on, on the land, and um, this effect we certainly have. And you also have the effect that there are uncountable numbers of snowflakes in the air, in all dimensions, in all directions, as far as one can sense. I know that um, Bach is behind this piece. Uh, it's, it's somehow a, it's an, a homage to the art of fugue, yeah. um, and I must admit, to begin with, I would never have seen that, because it's very carefully hidden. But of course, the way the piece is built has, has Bach's fingerprints on it. Um, but a sort of Bach sped up and slowed down, and seen from very far away, perhaps. It's music that's also playing with your own perception of what you can hear, because you're taken to a place where everything is so refined, or far, so far away, uh, at such a distance, or in such a, such a strange way, that you begin to question whether you've heard things before. And in the piece, actually, you have a lot of opportunities to hear the same music come back. So we hear, example, in, in, in the beginning of the second set of cans, so 2A and 2B, um, every bar, or every two bars, or every three bars, are repeated. So there's a very fast bar at the very beginning of number 2A, which goes something like da 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 and you hear it again immediately and then you jump into the next bar and you hear it twice and you hear it again but you, it's so quick you think did I hear it and it has an unsettling feeling as though uh, the wind blew the snow the same way but twice and you ask yourself did, did I you know like in the matrix there's this thing where they have deja vu if you see that if deja vu means there's a, a glitch in the matrix it feels like that so you start asking yourself whether you you dreamed the last bar or whether you 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 actually con whether your own concentration is up to the task of of seeing what's around you it's a tricky philosophical question <laughs>